Do you like going to the beach on a hot summer day? Yeah, me too. There's nothing like the sound of waves lapping at the shore, or the feeling of warm sand between your toes. Today we're going to have a closer look at that sand and those waves. This video is about the transport of sand along a shoreline by the waves. The process is called longshore drift. Imagine you could shrink yourself down to the size of a grain of sand. This is what you would see. Sand is an incredibly strange and intricate substance, as you will know if you've ever looked at it under a microscope. Now that you're just a millimetre or two tall, your experience of the world is going to change dramatically. For one thing, you're now light enough to be blown around by the wind, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. In a beach environment, sand can be transported or eroded by many different forces. There's the wind, streams flowing from the land, animals getting sand stuck in various places, oh, and the waves of course. Ocean waves are the most important force of erosion in pretty much every coastal landscape. A sandy beach is no exception. If you're a grain of sand chilling out near the shoreline, you are completely at the mercy of incoming waves. It doesn't even take a particularly big wave to pick you up and fling you higher up on the beach. As the wave retreats, you may get pulled back down the beach to await the next wave. This is going on all the time. Sand is being shoved back and forth along the face of the beach all the time. Or is it? Take a closer look around. Are you in exactly the same spot you were before that wave caught you? Probably not. In fact, if you follow a sand grain for a few hours on almost any beach in the world, you see an interesting pattern. It gets moved sideways along the shoreline in a kind of sawtooth pattern. Every grain of sand zigzags along the beach. Why does this happen? To answer that question, we need to look further out to sea to where the waves are created. Waves on the surface of the ocean are a response to the prevailing wind. In different parts of the world, prevailing winds blow in different directions, and they may change direction depending on the weather. For this explanation, let's just say the prevailing wind always blows from the northwest. The waves that are generated by this wind travel in the same direction, so in this case they will strike the beach from the northwest. They push sand grains up the beach in that same direction. This movement is called swash. Then, as the waves retreat and flow back down the beach, the sand grains follow the influence of gravity. They move back down the beach at right angles to the shoreline, following the natural slope that exists there. This movement is known as backwash. Repeated swash and backwash movements cause that zigzag pattern we saw earlier. Overall, the sand is moved sideways, parallel to the shoreline. This is longshore drift in action. Longshore drift not only transports sand across a beach, it uses that sand to build some stunning landforms. For instance, this is a satellite image showing Provincetown Spit in Massachusetts, USA. And this is Farewell Spit in New Zealand. A spit is not as gross as it sounds. It's a long bar of sand that extends out from the land into the ocean. This one is an impressive 26 kilometers long, with another 6 kilometers stretching under the water. It is all made up of sand that was transported by longshore drift. Now you should be able to draw a diagram like this to explain how longshore drift works. You might also like to learn more about landforms that are formed by longshore drift. I will put some useful links in the description if you'd like to know more about this process. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it interesting.